This is the Earth, and that is a rope around the Earth. My question to you is, by how much we need to extend this rope so the space is large enough for a cat to squeeze through? Think about it, you have time. I won't reveal the answer in the video. Instead, I'll show you how to get close to answering it by building this visual demo using JavaScript and HTML canvas. Let's see if your coding skills can handle the stretch. Get it? Stretch? Because we'll increase the circumference. No, 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 no. Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code as my editor and let's create a file called index.html and start writing basic HTML. First the doc type and then the HTML opening and closing tags and inside the head section, like so. And let's start adding a title to the page, title maybe the earth and the cat and let's close the title tag and in the body I'm going to write a simple canvas element like so. Now let's test this in the browser. I'm using Google Chrome and you don't see much yet. The title is here in the tab and you could see the canvas if you open the developer tools and inside the elements section, the canvas does appear here. And if you select it, it gets highlighted on the left and it shows. But the reason it's invisible otherwise is because it's transparent. So let's make it visible. I'm going to give it style using CSS. Let's give it the background color of navy, which is a kind of dark blue. Save, refresh, and you will see now the canvas appearing there. But I want it bigger. So what we can do, let me arrange this a little bit, is add here a width and a height. And I'm going to write here 1621 and a height of 1005 just because this fits my screen here nicely. You can choose any values you want really for this demo, it doesn't really matter. You could even make this fit the whole screen using JavaScript, but this project doesn't really require it, I think. Speaking of JavaScript, we need to refer to this canvas somehow, so let's give it an ID as well. And now we can start writing JavaScript and I'm gonna do it here inside of a script tag. Now, good advice is to type JavaScript and CSS in some other files, external files, but this is going to be such a small demo, I'm not gonna bother with it. But feel free to practice and do that. Now, here inside of the script tag, I want to get access to the drawing context of the canvas. So I can write my canvas get context and the 2D context is gonna be enough for this project. And let's try it out by drawing a simple circle. To do that, we begin a path and then we use the arc method of the context. And the first parameter here is the X value, like how much from the left we want our circle to be. Let's say 300 pixels, then 100 pixels from the top and a radius of 50 pixels. And the last two values here, zero and pi times two just means we want the full circle because this arc method can draw half circles, quarter circles, whatever arc you want. We need to specify here the start angle and the end angle. And instead of putting here 360 degrees, this function works with radians. So two pi radians means a full circle. And then we can fill, save the file, refresh the page, and it's here, but it's dark on dark, and uh, I want to be able to see it. So let's specify here 
the fill style and set it to white so it's clearly visible. And here it is. But I want it to be in the center. And instead of figuring out where the center is by dividing these values by two, I'm just going to go up here and create a variable for it and calculate it using code. So x at my canvas width divided by two and y is my canvas height divided by two. And this 50 and I'm also going to define a variable for this radius here. So let's say radius is 300 this time and I'm going to draw a bigger circle in the center of the screen like so. And doing this, you see this function call here became much more self-explanatory because you can read this. It's going to draw an arc at the center of the screen and you do need to know what these parameters are, but that comes with practice. Save the file, refresh the page, and here is our very large circle. Now, in this demo, we would like to draw a circle not with a given radius, but with a given circumference or length. How would we do that? Well, there is the formula for calculating the length of the circle, which is 2 pi times the radius. So we could start with that and think if 2 pi times the radius is the length of this circle here, 2 pi times 300 is about... 1,884, I think. So we could draw a circle with the length of 1,884 if we reverse that formula and say that the radius is equal to the length divided by 2 times pi. Now we should get exactly the same thing as before because the radius will be this divided by... 6.28 which is about 300. So save and I'm gonna go here without refreshing and when I do refresh you see nothing changed because we are now drawing a circle with length 1884 and that just means the same thing we had previously. If you would draw a smaller length like maybe 500 you can see that the new code does indeed work. But it starts to be a little bit confusing, like what are we really doing here? And this is the time when I usually like to refactor a bit and extract this as its own function. So I'm going to write here, draw circle with given length at the center and with length, the second parameter. I'm just going to wrap all of this inside of the function, close the curly brace, and then test by calling this like so. Now this is going to be the same thing as before. If I save and refresh, nothing is different. But I could call this multiple times, like maybe this is length 1 here. And let's define also length two to be length one plus something, maybe 200 pixels. And now if we call length two and length one, we should see two circles on top of each other. And we don't because they are both white. So let's give them different colors as well. I'm going to go here and add a third color parameter. It's going to be a parameter that has a default value of white. And I'm just going to replace here white with that. So it's an optional parameter because of this. And I'm only going to specify it here for length one. So let's make this one blue. And now we should see a bigger white circle and then a blue smaller circle on top of it. And we do. Now I want to work on the design of the app a little bit. So I want to make this look like the earth or 
maybe this is quite small here. I'm going to make it look like one of those gym balls and then draw a cat on top of it. So for that, I'm going to go up here and initialize an image like so. And I'm going to give it the source to be gymball.png. And when the image is going to load, we specify a callback function here. So this function is going to be triggered when the image loads. And what I'm going to do is only then I'm going to draw these circles because I want to draw the scene when we have the assets loaded. Typically, good advice here would be to have a preloader for your application, show that something is happening and that the image is loading. But this image is going to be a small thing and this demo app is not really such a significant thing. So we can work with this. And speaking of images, you can get them from the link in the description. I'm going to add them now here next to the index.html file. So what we have is this picture of a gym ball and this picture of the earth. So now the gym ball should be loaded into memory. And when it loads, it's going to draw those circles. If you save and refresh, nothing really happens because we are not displaying this image anywhere. But if you do open the developer tools and go to the console and type IMG, you will see that there is an image of the gym ball loaded somewhere in memory. So how do we display it? It's quite straightforward. Um, we probably won't need this color parameter anymore because now we're going to switch to using images, but let's keep it and add a fourth parameter for the image instead. So we are passing here the image as a parameter to this function, and I'm going to have to specify it here as well. By default, it's going to be null, so not everything will have an image. But if there is an image, I'm going to go down here, check if that value is not null like this. And if so, I'm going to call the draw image method of the context. And here, let's pass the parameters. The first one is the image. And then the second one is the X coordinate. So let's start with center X, then center Y. And then the width and height of the image, I'm just going to pass radius here for now. Save and refresh. And uh, we get this because when you draw the image, the X and Y coordinate is of the top left corner here. So this is the middle of the previous circles. And you can see this ball is quite small. It's actually half the size that we wanted because these are width and height values. So both of these need to be adjusted somehow. We can subtract here the radius for both of these values. So I'm going to say minus radius. And this is going to move the ball in the top left here. And when we are going to make it big by doubling the radius here, it's going to fit perfectly over the other circle. And now to draw the cat, I'm just going to use emojis here. So that's just text really. And I'm going to start by saying fill text. And let's just type here cat at the moment, center X, and then center Y minus the radius, because I want the cat to be on top of the ball. Now save, refresh, and you can barely see cat written there. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm setting the font to something like 30 pixels. And now it's bigger. But it's not in the center here because the text align is by default set to left. And we can fix that by setting it to center like so. Nice. And to make this look like a cat, I'm going to use an emoji. You can get it from the description. And when you refresh, it will look like this.
The cat is overlapping a little bit, the gym ball, for some reason. I'm just going to fix it here by saying minus some small value like 5. And now it fits perfectly in this area here. Okay, so let's see what happens now if we make this huge, like the size of the Earth. <laughs> well, on my screen, that's going to be something maybe like... 2500 pixels and let's replace this image as well the image of the earth and save refresh and <laughs> look at that <laughs> giant cat there anyway the important thing here is look what happened um the cat still fits in this region right even though we didn't change at all by how much we increased the length it's quite counterintuitive, isn't it? Like, if I revert here and use the previous size, you can see that the cat always fits inside and this difference here always seems to be the same. So why is it like that? Well, if you think about what happens here, the formula for the radius, let's make a little bit of space here is this so radius 1 is length 1 divided by 2 pi and radius 2 is length 2 divided by 2 pi but length 2 is length 1 plus 200 so if we split that up we get length 1 divided by 2 pi which is radius 1 plus 200 divided by 2 pi and that 200 divided by 2 pi it doesn't depend on the size of the circle so the spacing is always going to be the same and it only depends on by how much you increase in this case 200 divided by 2 pi is about 32 pixels i think so pixels don't really apply in the real world by how much should we increase that rope in meters so the cat can fit in let me know in the comments thanks for watching and see you guys